The cinematic trailer for Season 2 of Black Ops Cold War continues the story from Season 1. Set three months after the Operation Mall at the Pines, it provides intel on the location of Russell Adler after he was captured by Stitch and operatives from the Underground Collective. Brings us to the jungles of Laos, where we meet new operators like Wolf, Rifas and Naga and discover how the story of Black Ops Cold War will tie into Warzone. Let's take a look. Before continuing the video, as an added way to increase my income on YouTube, I have joined affiliate programs of companies and products that I support. The affiliate links can be found in the description. You can support me by using the supporter creator code MastermindsHD in the Epic Games Store and by clicking on or buying games and other products through the Kingwin and Amazon links. On top of that, I link to each of the products I use in my setup as a content creator, so if you're considering using these products, you can support me by following the link. I will only recommend products and services I use myself. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. Adler has some pieces of the puzzle but doesn't know he's a piece himself. He won't live long enough to work that out. I won't show him the mercy he showed me. He's trying to bait you, Adler. No shit. But if we don't stop him, civilians are gonna die. Do it. He's manufacturing Nova 6 again. Kill the rest. Adler is mine. Stitch, the rats are here. Adler's secure and headed to you in Badansk. Good. Make them believe we care about the Nova 6 supply lines. I have your visual. LC is hot. Light them up. Goddamn, well. It's go time. Get on the go. Don't get killed. Camp's a few clicks east. They knew we were coming. Fuck. 
can't afford, or Adler's as good as dead. He's one tough son of a bitch, but everyone's got a breaking point. Time's wasted, kids. Let's move. On January 21st, 1984, a team of underground collective operatives under the leadership of Vikor Stitch Guzmin infiltrated a CIA safe house in West Berlin, Germany. It was the safe house used by Russell Adler as a forward operating base in his hunt for Perseus only three years prior. After eliminating the guards, Stitch was confronted with an evidence board. The evidence was assembled around the center of the board, the king of spades, Stitch. Stitch's motives were unknown as he left a flyer for the Pines Mall with the message, come find me. The mall at the Pines in New Jersey was said to have its grand opening on the 23rd of January, only three days after Stitch's message. So after Adler and Zena Usu, a new operator added to Adler's squad, discovered the message, they had no choice but to spring Stitch's trap. Not even a day later, on the 21st of January, Adler assembled a small task force to launch Operation Mall at the Pines. The task force consisting of Adler, Zena, Bulldozer and Woods reached the door at the front entrance and started a sweep and clear. Upon entering the courtyard the team discovered a large cache of Nova 6 rigged to blow up, only to be ambushed seconds later by Stitch and his team. As gunfire erupts Adler and his team attempt an escape through the galaxy room but an RPG knocks down Zena, Bulldozer and Woods. Adler managed to take down two underground collective operatives but is knocked unconscious. Stitch and his team extract Adler on a chopper to an unknown location, or so it seemed. Roughly three months later, on April 19, 1984, the CIA launched an operation in Laos, Southeast Asia, in an attempt to rescue Adler. The operation was spearheaded by Rivas, the operator with a crossbow. Rivas and one other member of the task force seemed to be the only surviving members after what seems to be most likely an ambush by the underground collective. As Rivas says, rescue mission is FUBAR, need immediate reinforcements falling back to LZ. The unnamed operative, let's call him Fred, is seen running for his life through the dense jungle until he is tripped by Capono Nagafang, a ruthless trafficker of Nova 6. After Naga executes Fred, he picks up the King of Hearts with his name and picture. The CIA tracked Naga down as one of the lieutenants of the underground collective, similar to Stitch being the King of Spades. Naga's backstory and how he managed to get involved in the underground collective is unknown, but it's apparent he plays a big role. As the chopper passes overhead, Naga calls into Stitch Stitch, the rats are here, Adler is secured and headed to you in Verdansk. As to which Stitch replies, good, make them believe we care about the Nova 6 supply lines. The underground collective, although unknown how, seemed to have acquired intel on the CIA operation prematurely, allowing them to relocate Adler to Verdansk. So it appears that Adler was in fact held hostage in Laos, but not anymore. Stitch is already in Verdansk and Adler is being transported to him. It's unknown what plans the underground collective and specifically Stitch have with Adler in Verdansk, but it's something that will tie into Warzone and we will find out more about it soon enough. Stitch's message, make them believe we care about the Nova 6 supply lines, hints towards Stitch having other bigger plans than anything to do with Nova 6. And that's interesting, because Nova 6 is other than the nuclear threat, the largest threat the world has ever seen. Years later, during the operations in Verdansk, a variant of Nova 6 called Nova 4 is released by Al-Assad and Zakayev. It's never confirmed that it's Nova 6, but it has been teased. An interesting side note here is, as teased on the map cartel, Stitch wrote a letter to José Luis Menéndez, Raúl Menéndez's father. I understand the US is holding an ally of yours. We can secure its release if you agree to us utilizing your global shipping and distribution trade routes. I have precious cargo that cannot be disturbed. As goodwill, I know that your friend is scheduled for a prison transport next year, passing through Miami. Regards, Stitch. Stitch created an alliance in 1982, as that is when the map cartel is taking place with the now assassinated José Luis Menéndez. It's likely that his son, Ruel Menéndez, has taken over the cartel and formed an alliance with the Underground Collective. The map Miami is the scene of an ambush of the, of the prisoner transport from the Underground Collective. The identity of the prisoner is unknown. Moving on to the rest of the cinematic, we see Rivas running, ducking behind cover and penetrating a hostile skull with a crossbow bolt as the quick reaction force prepares to land in the landing zone. The QRF consists of Woods, possibly Sims, two unknown operatives and the one people seem to call Wolf. Even before the chopper lands, Wolf, an operator we don't know anything else about, jumps out with a minigun leaving absolutely nothing alive near the edge of the forest. 
As Rivas explains the situation, the QRF and the leadership of Woods is heading to the camp in the Golden Triangle with their objective of rescuing Adler, unbeknownst to them that Adler isn't there anymore. Now I've seen many people wonder if this is where Woods will be captured as he is later tortured in a jungle by Ruel Menendez. However, as this operation is set in Laos in 1984 and Woods was held hostage in Angola in 1986, it's unlikely this is where he gets captured. That's all we know as of this moment, but more will be revealed on February 25th as Season 2 launches. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming from writing a script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these types of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video, other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. Another way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. Other than badges and emojis, members will have early access to uploads of the large projects such as short films and large lore videos. And with that in mind, I want to say thanks to Monty Lambert for being the first tier 2 member and to Khalil Cheeks, Nervous Wrecked, Sparky22, Karsten Block and Sal Martinez for being tier 1 members of the channel. Your support means a lot. And the last way, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can support me by using the affiliate links and creator codes mentioned in the description. I'm invested in creating this brand and making it work, so the more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube to turn it into a full or a part-time job even. In turn, this will result in more frequent uploads, higher quality content and an amazing community with you guys. But however you choose to support me, I will be creating and uploading content because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.